In 1869, players in the first American football game used a round ball like in soccer. It was tough to carry and awkward to throw. The current shape enables a better grip and passing on an arc that's unique to football. Odd shaped balls, but with good reason. A lot of people handle an American football before it ever gets to the field. These balls are traditionally made from cowhide because it wears well over time. The four sections that make up the ball's skin are cut out using a die. A stamping machine then brands the skin with the company logo. Other markings are placed elsewhere on the ball depending on the design of the model being made. Each of the sections goes into a machine that trims the piece's combined weight down to spec. To strengthen the skin, cotton and vinyl linings are sewn onto all four sections. Then they are placed in a die that positions them to receive another set of markings. These four white lines will form two stripes when the sections come together. This is purely aesthetic and varies according to the football model. Now it's time to sew the top sections together and then the bottom ones to each other. Exactly how many stitches this takes is the company's closely guarded secret. This press makes a hole in one of the top sections for the air valve. Eight holes are made in the top sections for laces that will hold the skin tightly around an inflated bag called a bladder. To join the ball's top and bottom sections, a seamstress first cups them and then joins the edges together. She sews the leather inside out to make the stitches less visible. Later, by reaching through the opening between the lace holes, workers will turn the skin right side out. This is also where they'll insert the bladder. It's important to flatten the four seams. To do this, each one is placed on a wheel as a roller passes over the top. This keeps the ball from being bumpy when the skin is stretched over the bladder. A 15 second steam softens the leather and makes it easier to manipulate. A concave press flattens the seams at the tips. This will also keep the ball smooth when it's inflated. Time to turn the skin right side out. It's placed on a metal bar before being turned from inside out to right side out. A bar is run along the inside to reshape the skin. The bladder is made of polyurethane, a type of plastic, with a vinyl patch reinforcing the lacing area. After the bladder is squeezed inside the skin, the end of the air valve is snipped off to keep it out of the way. Then the bladder is inflated a little to make it rigid enough for lacing. The ball is steadied using clamps before an awl is used to thread the lace through the holes. Just one vinyl lace is used, measuring 1.2 meters. It worms through both sides and then down the center and through all the holes once again. The lacing is spaced a little more than a centimeter apart wide enough to comfortably grip for that magic pass you've got in mind. Next, the balls are temporarily overinflated. Steel molds surround them to ensure they assume the correct shape. After 90 seconds, the extra air seeps out. Finally, the balls are inspected to ensure they're up to standard. Fully inflated, a ball must weigh no more than 425 grams. It should measure 55 centimeters through the middle and 71 centimeters around both ends. After some teamwork in the factory, these balls are ready for kickoff.